Hey what's up guys it's Marf and welcome back to another mobile classics video. I apologize that it's been such a long time since the last episode but today I have a great game to showcase to you guys and one that many of you will have some nostalgia for and that is GT Racing Motor Academy. And yes, this is the first one, not the second one. I already made a video about that quite recently, actually. So you can take a look at that video. I'll have it linked in the description down below. But I found some footage on my computer that I completely forgot about. And it's actually some multiplayer races from not too long ago. I believe maybe only a couple of months to a year. And I thought that would be perfect footage for the background of today's Mobile Classics episode. So I wanted to talk a little bit about GT Racing Motor Academy because I feel like it's one of the most overlooked classic racing games on mobile, especially because of the sheer amount of content that this game had to offer. Alright, so before I continue my yapping about this game like I do with most mobile classics video, let me give you guys a bit of context. If you've never heard of GT Racing before, you might be looking at the gameplay on screen right now and thinking to yourself, this looks like if Gran Turismo was released on mobile, and you'd pretty much be right, that's exactly what this game was going for. If you know anything about Gameloft, you know that, especially during this era of mobile games, they were essentially taking the biggest name franchises on console and PC, putting their own little spin on it, and porting it to mobile. And what Call of Duty is to Modern Combat, and Asphalt is to Need for Speed, GT Racing Motor Academy is essentially mobile Gran Turismo. Now, just to be honest up front, I have never really played a Gran Turismo game before. I played a little bit of the PSP game in an emulator, but if you've watched me for any extended period of time, you know that I really don't like sim games and that's because I find them boring. But with this game, it was a little different because of how different it was compared to the competition, especially on mobile devices. If I remember correctly, at the time, the only real similar game to GT Racing Motor Academy on mobile was Need for Speed Shift Mobile, which I also really enjoyed because of its visceral nature. However, that game didn't have nearly the same amount of content and depth that this game has because this game was really going for a Gran Turismo similarity. So it included a bunch of tracks, cars, and features, and a bunch of similar things you'd see in Gran Turismo like licenses and classes. Now besides Need for Speed Shift Mobile, there was the Real Racing franchise which I believe had its first release in 2009, however as we'll get into a bit later, that was a paid game whereas GT Racing Motor Academy had a different approach. And it's because of that depth and dedication to more or less realism, but you know, it's sort of restricted based on the time that this game came out. But that's what sort of hooked me in at the beginning. I never really got into this game the same way I would have into the Asphalt games at the time, like Asphalt 6 and Asphalt 5, but I had a very good time in this game, especially exploring the different interiors of different cars. That was something that blew my mind. I believe the first Need for Speed Shift also had that, but the interior cams was something that was relatively new to mobile gaming at the time, and I had a lot of fun with that. But as I mentioned earlier, the amount of content in this game was crazy. The car our list was in the hundreds if I remember correctly, there were a ton of different tracks and it was just really fun to sit down and if you were bored, you could just play this game for hours on end. Now the other thing that drew in a lot of people at the time, including myself, was the way that this game pioneered the free system for mobile gaming. During this 2010 era, it was still very common to offer a light version of your game and then a paid version where in the light version, you'd offer like one track and one car, at least for a racing game, and then the paid version would have all the other content. And obviously the point of the light version was to incentivize people and give them a little bit of a taste to see if they wanted to buy the normal version. And that's how you got people to pay for your game. However, while there was an initial release of this game that was paid, this game also had a GT Racing Motor Academy Free Plus version which really started the whole freemium version of mobile games 
and well, Gameloft was the first one to really do well in pioneering this system. So just as you would expect from any free game nowadays, you had a lot of limitations that would be pretty easily bypassed if you paid, or I believe you could still watch ads in this version all the way back in 2010. So that was a lot of similarities to what you would see nowadays in free mobile games. Now I say that like it was a pioneer and it's so cool, but obviously that led to, well, what we see today in mobile gaming, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's undeniable that this was the future of mobile games and Gameloft clearly saw that. But let's get back into the gameplay and the core game itself because obviously that's why you're here and that's why in my opinion it remains a classic. So beyond the interior cam that I believe I mentioned earlier which was really darn cool, the roster of cars in this game was huge. I mean, like Gran Turismo, you had cars you would never expect to see in a racing game, like the Citroen box car, you had a freaking Toyota Prius, you had the Corolla. These cars were just non-existent in other racing games. And sure, maybe that doesn't excite you, but it shows you the level of dedication that they had to recreating the Gran Turismo experience on mobile. You even had a ton of classic cars like old Shelby's and I think they even had a Ford Model T. So you could race with normal street cars, classic cars, even race cars because they had a collaboration with Red Bull F1. So practically speaking, if you wanted to play Gran Turismo on your phone or on an iPad or a tablet or whatever, you could just download this game for free, may I remind you, and you'd get most of what the Gran Turismo core experience is like in your pocket whenever you want. Now that I've mentioned the Formula One thing, that also reminds me that this game was probably one of the first to deliver continuous updates throughout the lifespan of this game. And obviously that's something we see nowadays in games like Asphalt 9. So I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. And if you've never seen this game before, hopefully I've shown you a game that really pioneered the amount of content that you can pack into a mobile game, but also match the console fidelity. And yes, even though you look at it, it can be like, oh, that's like a PlayStation 1 game or whatever. You have to think about when this game came out all the way back in 2010. Yes, we had Asphalt 6. Yes, we had some of the modern combat games. But if you combine the amount of content with the pretty good graphics of this game, not saying that they are amazing by today's standards, you get for an experience that really was truly ahead of its time. Now, just to talk about the handling mechanics for a second, I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert when it comes to analyzing sim games and their handling mechanics, so I don't want to touch on too much detail there but you could definitely tell a difference between each car model, and for someone who came from playing Asphalt games, it definitely felt like a step up in terms of the fine details that you felt between each car. And of course, that's not to mention that there was an Audi TT in this game, and I could drive the interior, and for the first time of playing this game after many, many years, I looked at that interior, and it was definitely a bit of a shock to how similar it looked on my little iPod to how it looks in real life, so that was fun to see as well. All right. Right, guys so that's going to do it for this episode of mobile classics but i'm particularly interested to hear your guys thoughts about this game because my video about the sequel gt racing 2 sort of blew up and a lot of people were very fond about that game so i'm curious to hear what you guys think of its predecessor anyway guys i hope you enjoyed let me know if there are any games you'd like me to check out for the next episode of mobile classics in the comment section down below and i will see you all later